So I'm out of Trenton right now. Um, basically just been from the Jersey area for the most part. Uh, kind of close to you guys, like only 30 minutes away. Uh, I'm playing for Roll to Wound now just because uh, uh, Target's been around for a little while now. Um, and I end up going to most tournaments with Nick and them. But uh, you guys are always a blast too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I, I have had Grey Knights for a long time. I actually first picked them up when they were just awful years ago, and I only played them as uh, just a for-fun list. Uh, and then when the new edition came out in 5th uh, edition, I had to shell them just because they were pretty over-the-top nuts. And uh, the only time I really pulled them out was when Nick was getting a little bit of a big head with his Grey Knights. Because uh, I just lost to his Grey Knights over and over and over with my poor Deathwing. So uh, I finally pulled him out, and then he switched to Demons. And uh, I pretty much stomped him. Uh, one of those things where it's like, who takes Banishers? Well, you know, I, I think Banishers are amazing for killing Demons. So... So, uh, the, we don't know how the, the facts are going to go yet, but uh, so far with psychic powers, um, what they can roll out of the book is it's up for debate. We all pretty much know that they should be rolling Sanctic, but uh, there's currently no mechanism in place for them to get it. Uh, so that, that's, that's kind of, you know, confusing at the very least, just until this shakes out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, if they do switch over their powers, then the powers that they do have now are pretty much going to be going away. I mean, I can't imagine them keeping the old hammer hand um, when they have a new hammer hand in the book. The old hammer hand was kind of unique uh, just because it said it applied before all other modifiers. So it was great to kind of sneak in to get some higher strength. So, uh, like, you, it was before doubling, which was a big deal for Grey Knights getting up to strength 10 um, really easily. Same thing with the little strength three guys. They could get up to strength ten with just two hammer hands. So it, it was uh, uh, it definitely with the, the new ones not being able to stack. Uh, we're not, I'm not sure if blessings are going to be able to stack. If you're going to be able to cast the new hammer hand multiple times like you could with the old. So, yeah. 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 So, I mean, like Purifiers with Cleansing Flame, for example, um, it's just pretty much an unplayable power right now. Right. Yeah, you can't cast, you know, a power in the Assault phase right now, so... There's, there's a lot of things that are, are actually kind of uh, stealthy. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm actually pretty excited about is Storm Ravens. I can't see anything that says you're limited in the number of missiles you can fire now. Uh, it used to be limited to just two. So uh, now you should be able to fire all four of your Psyker hunting mind strikes all at once. And... Uh, they didn't work in the previous edition that well because if you're hunting something like an Eldar Farseer, he could spend his warp charge tokens 
because uh, he probably had a ton of them in the shooting phase. Well, now he won't have any, so it'll finally work on the Eldar psychers, for example. Yeah. So, and there's a and there's a ton of talk about people running, you know, or thinking about running psychic heavy lists. So, you know, a few mind strikes can really catch him off guard, I think. Yes. Yeah, so um, I think you're going to see a lot of people running Grey Knights uh, as allies or uh, even as primary with, you know, the main punch coming from their allies just because, you know, you don't need a lot of Grey Knights uh, in terms of points to get some pretty hefty abilities. Like Storm Raven runs in at, you know, 200 some points, uh, but just one Storm Raven, now that you can put Battle Brothers inside it, uh, has a huge amount of uh, utility. I mean, you could even put, if you really wanted to, you could put like a, a Furiosa Dreadnought inside a Grey Knight Storm Raven. Just to... Yeah. Yeah, having Battle Brother access to a huge amount of uh, Imperium armies. I mean, Grey Knights didn't have any Battle Brothers before, and then Inquisition came around, and they had... Uh, you could take Inquisition, which had better Battle Brothers, but now that Grey Knights have Battle Brothers to everything, combinations that you couldn't even dream of before are now all of a sudden... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the talk about Grey Knights is, is how many dice they can put out. Uh, not just the vehicles, but they have... Uh, if, you, if you take the uh, Inquisition Henchman, you can buy a Psyker for 10 points. The unit's three strong, so you can get one Psyker and two four-point Henchmen. So it's an 18-point Psyker. Uh, more or less. It's one Psyker and two little bodies. It's the cheapest way to... 18 points to get a mastery level on the table. It's, it's the cheapest, yeah. It, and then you can put them in a Psychic vehicle for another 40 or so points. Or you can upgrade it to a Razorback and now you have two Psychic uh, levels for under 100 points. Yep. Well, if you take Cody as, yep, then they're <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the line between ally and primary is going to be blurred. Uh, I mean, the idea of your primary detachment uh, being the one that you know, is your warlord, doesn't really hold up as much now that everything is scoring. So it's really just about where you want your slots coming from. So for example, if you're taking Grey Knights like uh, in the game that was just on, uh, I believe the Grey Knights were primary in that, but uh, you know all the vehicles didn't really do too much. It was the, the allies that seemed to be uh, doing most of the damage. So, yeah, so the Grey Knights can provide a ton of psychic dice, just a ton of them, but they can't really use them for themselves right now. Uh, even if you do go with the old fact where Inquisitors and the uh, Librarian can swap out their powers, uh, Kodiaz, which you're going to want to take just to unlock uh, the henchmen as troops, and another Inquisitor, that's three rolls on a psychic chart. Uh, and you're looking at, you know, like 15 to 20 dice from bringing a Grey Knight army and three to maybe five powers, depending on which psychers you take, to actually use them on. Uh, whereas if you take Grey Knights as your primary, but then you run something like a, uh, an allied uh, psyker like Tigerius, who's getting a lot of powers and he's feeding off of all of those dice, and then you're taking a Centaurian unit with him, which is a huge amount of points, but uh, only one slot, 
then you have more points in your allied detachment, and that's doing most of your work, but Grey Knights are technically your primary. Right. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to assaulting, uh, the the new change for, you know, everything gets 2d6 and then just minus 2, it makes it so that a lot of the charges are going to be better. Um, just because of the way the the dice works on 2d6, it's, it's really hard to get uh, a 0 to, you know, 1 inch charge, whereas before going through terrain, um, with 3 dice, you were you know, you had a pretty likely chance of getting a really low roll uh, just because you were dropping the highest. So, you know, now if you roll a 6 on that 2d6, you're guaranteed, you know, a minimum of uh, 5 inches. So, it's it's one of those things where you're, you're more likely to get your assaults off even when going through terrain. Um, and in the assault phase, uh, things can't take away Fearless anymore because they got rid of that from telepathy. So, like, let's say you're running Drago with a whole bunch of uh, paladins. Well, you know, if you before you could kill a couple and then make them run, take away their fearless. You can't do that anymore. Uh, that power just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So I feel that uh, paladins are less like terminators and more like uh, uh, obliterators or centurions because the two wounds really elevates them beyond what a normal terminator can do. Um, they're they're decent in assault, uh, weapon skill five with a variety of powers. Uh, but they don't really have a, a huge invulnerable save. But now with all these psychic powers, it's you know fairly easy to get them up to a two-up invulnerable save. Um, they come stock with a sword that makes them plus one invulnerable save in close combat. You can cast the four-up invulnerable save power from divination, and then you can cast plus one invulnerable save from sanctuary from sanctic. And even if you have to do it from uh, you know a non-gray knight psyker. Taking a Perils of the Warp to get a 2-plus Invulnerable save for your whole Grey Knight Paladin unit is pretty good. Um, I see somebody put Invisible Pally Star. Yeah, that, I mean, Invisible invisible anything is, is going to be amazing. Uh, and you just, yeah, you just want to put, when it comes to something like uh, Invisible, you know, the bigger the points of the unit and the more people want to shoot it, then uh, the more utility you're going to get out of it. So, you know, an invisible paladin unit that's, you know, maybe gating up the field because of, uh, you know, inf infinite range gate of infinity, uh, that's going to go a long way to making close combat with Grey Knights, you know, pretty pretty ridiculous. And then with, uh, with Storm Ravens and Land Raiders, um, that they do make the uh, Death Cult Assassins, you know, pretty deadly. Um, so they're they're both viable. So uh, the list I put together um, was six Razorbacks with uh, Laz Plaz. Uh, I didn't go with the uh, the Cybolt Assault Cannons because with the uh, change for AP2 uh, being the only way you can blow up a vehicle without getting with hell points and the extra range on the LAS and everything. I feel like uh, having to pay five points for the twin link to salt cannon probably isn't worth it. And in each one of those I have a, uh, a psyker just to buff up my dice count. 
Uh, I have two banishers in those six units. Um, I have two of the uh, Storm Ravens, so you can put the banishers in the Storm Ravens as needed, because I feel that demons are still a, a thing to watch out for, so the two banishers go a long way to toning down their invulnerable saves. And then uh, Cody has in a grenade caddy inquisitor, uh, just because you almost have to. And then I ally in Tigerius with the uh, Centaurians, because Tigerius can dig for powers and use the that list has 20 psychic dice. Yeah, it's it's 12 from the troops, and it's uh, three from Tigerius, and three from the Inquisitors, and two from the uh, Storm Ravens. So with with 20 power dice, and that's uh, six rolled powers plus if you do psychic focus, if you keep your psychers within uh, their you know just one discipline, you get another three Primaris powers. So you know, with those 20 dice, you'll actually have decent powers to use. Uh, you'll be able to kill enemy psychers with your your Storm Ravens. Uh, you have decent enough close combat with the Centaurian Star with three characters in it. Uh, and Grav is even better now that uh, Grav can kill Bastions. So Grav is the perfect anti-everything now. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you get six Laz Plaz Razorbacks, which, I mean, yeah, that's a lot of AP two shots. Oh yeah. Yep. Thank you very much.